first review of 2023. My aim this year is to try and make the reviews a bit shorter and a bit punchier and not waffle on so much about the temperature in the car or how stupid my hair looks. It's the 10th of January 2023 um, this is my first visit to the cinema since I saw Violent Night just before Christmas. Um, and the reason I haven't been for a little while is because on the 21st of December last year I adopted a dog called Pickle and she's got a bit of separation anxiety so my evenings when I'm free, child free, when I can go to the cinema I now have to arrange uh, dog care. So another reason to make the review short because I have to go and uh, reclaim my pooch. So this was a perfect film to kick off my cinema visiting for this year. Um, it is a film called Empire of Light and it is written and directed by Sam Mendes. I'm quite emotional after watching it and I teared up in several places, some of them quite unexpected. And I think one of the reasons why I got emotional was because the film is set in and around a cinema called The Empire, which is in an, an unnamed British seaside town. And the film starts in 1980 and rolls over into 1981. And it is about the wonder of cinema, to a certain extent. It's also about human connection and relationships and <sighs> leaning on people when times are tough and a load of different themes and they're sort of woven together beautifully in that Sam Mendes way there's it's just really really good at what he does and I know obviously we, we can't really revisit um, American Beauty joyously now in light of um, Kevin Spacey perhaps being a wrong -in. but it is just that thing of it just makes films about lives and people's paths crossing and the effect that that has the ripple effect of one life on another he does really really well so at the center of the film is the empire cinema it's a two screen cinema previously a full screen cinema um and it's this big grand old building like i say it's set in 1980 1981 there was something so nostalgic for me when I saw the inside of the cinema and it just made me think of the old Odeon on Pilgrim Street in Newcastle, which isn't there anymore. And it was this great big grand cinema that had one glorious screen. It's like a 1200 seat. I was so uncomfortable, but it was beautiful to look at. And then they had three sort of normal screens that were a bit rubbish. But just the the look of the empire in the film and the detail and the sweet cabinets and just really got me in the old nostalgia feels thinking about that cinema back in Newcastle and how much it meant to me and then across the road from that was the Tideside Cinema which is still there so that I found beautiful and it's just so wonderfully shot because it's Sam Mendes and there's just some beautiful moments in it and they're not necessarily big moments they could be quite sort of throwaway moments but just you sit there and you look at everything on the screen and it's just beautiful and the story i guess centers around a woman called hillary who is played by olivia coleman are there even words for olivia coleman like good god the woman is so jeffing good in everything she's in. And we just sort of take it for granted. Oh, yeah, Olivia Coleman. Yeah, Olivia Coleman. Oh, yeah, Olivia Coleman. Just, but she's like almost incapable of a bad performance. And it's everything from like Big Sue's in Peep Show. She wasn't Big Sue's. Who was she? Oh, God. The Peep Show fans are going to have me for that. What was her name? Mark fancied her. Oh, God. I can remember Big Sue's, but that wasn't her. It's irrelevant. From whoever she played in Peep Show, it'll come to me when I start recording this. Um, to, oh, God, Miller in Broadchurch to playing whichever queen she was in The Favourite. And just 
consistently superb and she's so good in this hillary's not had the best life she lives quite a small existence um you find out quite early on in the film that our doctors put her on lithium so clearly something has gone awry somewhere with her in the last year or so but she works at the empire she's quite happy in her job it's not a huge staff that works there um there's a projectionist played by toby jones who's also just effortlessly brilliant colin firth plays the manager of the cinema who's a bit of a an arse and then there's sort of a mishmash of 80s teenagers you know the very classic there's the girl i think she's called janine with back combed hair and black lipstick and then there's a a young guy who is called neil because you know people used to call their babies neil and he's got really bad haircut and nhs specs and basically he's clearly about 25 if that but because it's the 80s and because of his hair and his glasses he looks like 40 odd but they seem to have quite a nice little rapport there. And then they take on a new lad called Stephen, who is played by Michael Ward. I'm sure it was Michael, I've just looked him up. Um, Michael is black. Again, early 20s, didn't get a place in college, so he's come to work at the cinema. And he strikes up a friendship with Olivia Coleman's character, Hilary, but it's not just about their relationship. It's about the impact that they have on each other. It's about how that affects the people around them. She, it becomes apparent, has got problems with her mental health. And it, one of the things, again, that moved me is as she starts to sort of lose her grip. It's just that thing of feeling sad for women and men back then when there wasn't the understanding about mental health. I think that she's referred to at one point as being schizophrenic, but just that she just looks so lost. And then when she meets Stephen, it sort of brings this light into her life that she'd been missing. But ultimately what can realistically happen between the two of them? Because there's a big age gap. They're very different from each other. Their lives are very different. They have in common the fact that they both work together, but then they do find more things in common. So it's just this little snapshot of very early 80s, coastal Britain. The rise of the skinhead is touched upon, but again, it doesn't dominate the whole story. It's just about these characters and it's something Mendes does so well is just taking characters making you care about them making them interesting and then just seeing how things play out you know what effect do we have on the people around us and the importance of those friendships and those connections especially for somebody like Hillary who has quite a lonely existence and is prone to bouts of despair or mania which the people around her are just trying to you know support her as best they can i can't really say anything else about it other than it was very bittersweet it looked incredible the performances across the board were superb and it was really moving in moments and in ways i wasn't expecting so I'm not sure what I thought the film was going to be and I think it probably wasn't what I expected anyway but it was very very well made and I'm really glad I've seen it um, I might have to choose a bit more carefully with my cinema visits until I can get Pickle to cope without me being around so this was a good one to kick off the year thanks for watching bye bye